Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over an upcoming cold and snowy pattern for portions of the eastern United States. This is probably going to be happening between now and I would say the middle part of January. Uh, so the early to middle part of January is when it looks like it might turn warmer, although there is still uncertainty with that. Every time it seems like it's going to warm up, it ends up being colder and that pattern sticks in. So we're going to be talking about that colder pattern that's going to be overtaking the eastern United States and is currently in effect for the eastern United States. We're going to be looking Looking at some model guidance as well as some of the ensemble models to look at some of the upper air maps and also uh, some of that snowfall guidance to show where that main snowfall threat will be. We're also going to be looking at teleconnections and uh, overall uh, what the effects of the La Nina are going to be like over portions of the eastern United States as we get to the early and middle part of this winter season. We're going to be going over a lot of scientific and in-depth stuff in today's video, so uh, definitely if you do like that type of content, let me know down below, and also if you have any questions or do you want a personal forecast for your area, leave your area down below and I'll answer all of your comments. Now, let's get right into it here, and let's start off with your current National Weather Service page. Now, we see those air quality alerts and those dense fog advisories in effect for portions of the northwest. We also see some hard freeze warnings and some red flag warnings in effect for southern California there. And then we have some winter weather advisories for southwestern Texas. We see winter weather advisories for eastern and southern New England, kind of like that. And then we see some winter storm warnings for much of, e uh, or, or actually the winter weather advisories are for western and southern New England. The, win the, uh, the winter storm warnings are for eastern New England, so for much of Massachusetts, uh, northeastern Connecticut, into all uh, of New Hampshire, and into uh, much of Maine there, that's where we're looking at those winter storm warnings going up, and that's mainly from that system that's kind of dipped down from uh, the south, and it's moving up into portions of the northeast uh, that's met with a trough that was kind of like this, went down, uh, and it met up with the system, and that's why you're dealing with that snowstorm over portions of the northeast. So so let's start talking about some of those in, uh, ensemble models and what they're really indicating for uh, this upper air pattern that's really going to dictate your pattern. Now. Here's a current look at what your upper air looks like. This is at 500 millibars. This is a few thousand feet up in the atmosphere. This would be right around 10,000 feet up. Uh, and it's generally giving you an idea of what we're dealing with right now. So this is right now when I'm recording this video. Uh, and we see the effects of that negative NAO where we're dealing with a ridge out near Greenland. Which what that means is that that jet stream is going to plummet. Or actually kind of go right up to the north and then plummet down back into Europe. And that same thing is going to happen over the eastern United States. This ridge Ridging out in Greenland allows ridging over the western United States, which in turn means that you're going to get that cold air to press into the eastern United States. So, a ridge in the west, we have a ridge over Greenland. This is a prime pattern for some snowfall for the eastern United States. We also see, uh, really, what you want to see is uh, a lot of just action going up on uh, through parts of the Arctic. What that means is that you don't have a wrapped up polar vortex, and really, you would think that you would want that, but what that means is that it's going to be hard order for that to unleash. So if you have a very uh, not wrapped up, if you have a very weak uh, polar vortex, that means that you're not going to have a lot of, uh, a lot of, you're going to have a lot of movement within that polar vortex. It's not going to be able to sit still. It's going to be picked up with tiny little systems that bring in a little bit of that cold air uh, time after time. And eventually you're not going to really have too much of a polar vortex. It's just going to be a bunch of cold air seeping into parts of the United States and Canada, as well as another area where it seeps into parts of Europe and Asia. So you don't want a strong polar vortex. That usually means warmer temperatures. If you want warmer temperatures, then you would like a stronger polar vortex. That weaker polar vortex, again, allows it to move more, and it allows more of that cold air to seep into portions of the United States. Now, here's what your polar vortex currently looks like, and this is at your 10 millibar level. This is about 90,000 to 105,000 feet. So whatever you're dealing with now, it's probably going to happen about two weeks later. So uh, for example, this cold air right here, where you have that trough in this position is probably going to happen on the surface if it does translate. It's not a guarantee that this ha does happen at the surface, but if this does translate to the surface, it'll probably be like this right around December 15th, uh, 15th through the 20th or so. So that's going to be your time frame. You, this is about a two-week lagging indicator, which means that you have to take whatever's looking, uh, whatever the 10 millibar looks like right now, and basically you, you can translate that to the surface as we get to 
uh, 14 days later about. So uh, we see that polar vortex. The center of that surface polar vortex is up north of Greenland, but the real cold air is actually sitting south of Greenland into eastern Canada. And if you look at those isobars, you're dealing with a trough that's digging into the eastern United States. So this is right now what your polar vortex looks like. Here's by December 8th. We're dealing with that shifting a little bit further to the east, but that colder sticks. So what we're dealing with now is some sort of warming event, which is going to displace that cold air. You start to see a ridge out near Alaska. So this is a ridge of high pressure right here. And that's allowing more of that warm air where you see those oranges and those browns start to pop up, uh, pop up on either side of uh, this polar vortex. That's meaning that this polar vortex is going to have to split at some time because this warm air keeps on attacking it. You could say it keeps on trying to influence infiltrate the polar vortex. So what this polar vortex is going to say is I'm going to just move out of here. I'm going to move into Asia and Europe and I'm going to split in two and move uh, one area into North America, the other area into Asia and Europe and it's going to end up splitting and that usually is when you get those coldest uh, temperatures. So the GFS has been indicating this especially in the long range for the past couple of days. So let's see what it ends up doing with this. So this would be by the 13th. Here's by the 17th. Here's by the 21st. This is the last day on this model and uh, I'll actually play this back a little bit, so uh, I, I think I went a little bit too fast there. So this is by the 13th here. Here's by the 17th, and notice what you're starting to see by this point. Look at this little area of orange and red over portions of Russia and Mongolia and into parts of China there. That's allowing um, that's allowing this polar vortex uh, to kind of weaken a little bit more, and when you see a stratospheric warming event, which is what this is called, where you see warm air on either side of the polar vortex here, that's usually what allows this to split and you can see how elongated this polar vortex is it's about to split and it looks like it's about to split uh, and if we look at what the last frame of this model actually does uh, it does somewhat split this so you start to see a weaker polar vortex moving into portions of uh, northern Europe and then you see another one that moves into northern North America so these are about to split and you see the stratospheric warming event with that deep red over portions of uh, northern and actually central Russia I would say where you're looking at some of that uh, some of that warming in the upper parts of the atmosphere and if you look at what your trough looks like by this point it's a straight dig down into the eastern United States with cold coming all the way down to the uh, eastern United States so that looks like a good sign it's whether this is really going to translate and so far we have seen this translate there's nothing to say that th that won't continue now here's what the European ensemble model is showing in terms of the 500 millibar heights now the blues of course showing low pressure pressure, the reds are showing higher pressure. So we see a very dominant ridge over the western United States and then that very dominant uh, trough into the eastern United States. And let's see how this plays out. So this would be by December 8th. Here's by the 16th. Uh, and you're looking at still that troughing uh, pattern over portions of the eastern United States, but it's not as prevalent. But the good thing that you want if you want to see cold and snow focus out on the western United States, the west is going to dictate what happens in the east because if you have that ridge out in the west, there's really no pattern in which you have a ridge over the entire U.S. Usually, you'll have some cold air at least seep into the eastern United States and vice versa. If you have that tr if you have that trough in the west, you're likely going to have that ridge out in the east. So, uh, moving this forward here, here to be by December 22nd. Uh, notice that you do see those yellows and oranges pop up. That's not what you really want to focus on. Look at where your isobars are pointing at. You're looking at a zonal pattern according to this. So you're dealing with just west to east systems. Not a lot of uh, uh, not a lot of north to south motion. Not a lot of south to north motion. Really just a flat pattern. But you do see a slight trough in the eastern United States if you look at the isobars, and that only really uh, amplifies, especially as you get into the central United States as you get to right around tw the 29th of December, you are looking at some sort of ridging up through the eastern, uh, the east coast, I would say, but you are dealing with that trough through the central United States, not fully to the western United States, and then that trough continues to move eastward as we're getting to early January. So maybe around Christmas time, it warms up for a little bit, but then potentially as we get to January, early January, you start to get back into that troughing pattern uh, that we were looking at before, and then here's the final frames of this model. Here's by the 12th of January. We're looking at more of that La Nina effect where you see uh, cold air locked up in the northwest and the north central. Uh, and that just continues all the way through much of January. So 
Another thing that we want to look at is those teleconnections. Now, this is the AO. You want this to be uh, negative if you want cold in the east, and that is very negative uh, at, at this point. It's a, I would say a slight negative by this point. It looks like it might tilt up to near neutral, but then it skyrockets downwards into portions uh, of uh, probably closer to negative 2 or negative 3 on the AO index, and this is from the European model. Now, let's look at what uh, the East Pacific Oscillation, the EPO, looks like, and you want this to be positive uh, if you want cold in the east and that is definitely staying positive it has been fairly uh fairly consistent it's fluctuated a little bit but it has stayed near neutral or positive for this entire period and by the way this goes out to about the 15th of december so not fully out into december but at least we know this pattern will continue uh and it looks like it won't stop for at least another two weeks after this uh period so uh here would be uh what the nao looks like sorry i went ahead there uh the nao we're looking at a negative nao and that's actually very good for cold in the east and this is one of the first times in quite a while that we've seen a negative AO uh, NAO and we're looking at that staying fairly negative between a degree or uh, between a degree and two degrees uh, below uh, average so that is definitely good if you like cold and snow in the east and here's your PNA and I would say arguably this is the most important. Now, you can line up kind of the systems with the teleconnection. So notice that right now we're in a very positive PNA. We're dealing with a, a somewhat of a blizzard over portions of New England. So as this stays fairly positive, uh, the, the higher positive it is, uh, that definitely means the more cold and snow that's going to seep into the eastern United States. But even though it skyrockets downwards, that's probably the exiting of this uh, system that's going to lead th to that being um, a little bit closer to neutral, but it stays uh, slightly above normal uh, around neutral, and that's not too bad if you like cold and snow. Maybe not the coldest pattern, but definitely not a warm pattern uh, if this were to be the case. Now, here's where those areas affect the EPO up in the northeastern Pacific, the PNA out further to the west of uh, in the western United States, northwestern uh, Mexico, southwestern Canada, the AO over the Arctic regions, the NAO over portions of the North Atlantic of course now here's what you want if you want a cold pattern in the east a positive PNA a positive EPO and then kind of that sliver and that little area between the P uh, the EPO and the PNA you want to trough there uh, kind of on the same latitude of Hawaii right here uh, and if you do have that that's a fairly good pattern uh, and if you also have the NAO and the AO matching up with both negatives which we do have we have all of this in place right now that leads to troughing out in the uh, eastern United States it leads to ridging out over the Atlantic ridging out over the western United States. This is a primal pattern uh, for cold and snow in the east if you do like cold and snow. And then if you don't want cold and snow in the east or if you want cold and snow in the west, this is what you want. A negative PNA, still positive EPO, uh, but you don't want that trough to be there over uh, Hawaii. Uh, that would definitely be a, a signal of colder temperatures in the east, warm temperatures in the west. And you would want that positive AO, a positive NAO uh, for the most part. That's really what you would want if you want cold and snow in the western United States or if you want milder and drier and warmer conditions in the eastern United States. Also, here are your ensemble models for that snowfall, uh, and this is through 10 days, so this is through the 13th of December, uh, and we're looking at a decent amount, especially over the northeast. That's where it's really bullseyeing that snowfall. Now, here it'd be by the 2nd of January, so this would be going out 30 days, uh, and once you get into those blues, that's where you, I would say you have over a 70 or 80% chance of seeing some snow by this point uh, and we are looking at a lot of the country under that uh, blue area or into the purples the pinks even in a lot of areas so this would be by January 2nd here's by the 17th here's uh, this is a 45 day uh, snowfall totals from the uh, European ensemble models and it's looking at uh, if you're in those purples by the way that's probably closer to a hundred percent chance that you see at least about two inches of snow within this period uh, and we're looking at some fairly good amounts for portions of the Northeast the Great Lakes up through the north central and the western United States as a whole, uh, especially in those mountainous areas, looking at some good snowfall amounts. So that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you do have any questions or you want a personal forecast, leave a comment down below with your area, your general location, so I could give you a forecast for your area. Uh, and also, uh, if you do want me to make more of these, leave a like down below. That definitely lets me know. That's a good indicator. As well, if you do like them, uh, tell me down below why you like them, what you like about it, or what you don't like about it, and I'll definitely try and improve them uh, in the future. So that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Please consider liking the video, subscribing, and turning 
turning on notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.